What is up guys, it's your boy Swole, I'm here, back with another classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, what a last 24 hours has been for Season of Discovery, based on the PTR so far, there's been data mining coming out, there's been gameplay on, done on the PTR, and a bunch of testing as well. We suddenly have a lot more information about Phase 4, which is incredible. I'm going to cover some of it here today, it's mostly going to be a blue post and a WoW head post as well. For example, we have tier sets being determined, so we have have a bunch of really cool tier set bonuses to look at. We have Sulfurus, we have some hints towards Ashbringer maybe being available, and some raid difficulties in Molten Core. Either way, let's take a look at it, let's take a look at what they have in store for us, and take a deeper dive into Phase 4 based on PTR and data mining. So going over to Wowhead, the first thing we can see here is that we have a brand new version of Sulfuras being added, or like a, a rework basically. So on the left you can see the old version, on the right you can see the new version. Now first of all, there's plus equip plus attack power in cat, bear and dire bear forms, and chance on hit is still still the same. Then we have um, equip, 20% chance to deal 25 fire damage to all nearby enemies when you are struck by a melee attack. So instead of being a guaranteed dealing 5%, it is now 20% chance to deal 25 fire damage, which if you equal that out, that should be about the same, but hey, it's the same thing. So you still have the equip down to get more attack power in cat and bear form, meaning this will now be a feral druid mace and a guardian in the druid mace, like both a feral druid tank and dps mace, and you also have, look at this, the speed, so the total damage went from 223 to 372 to 229 to 382, and the speed went from 3.7 to 3.8, the damage per second is still the same, but the weapon speed has gone from 3.7 to 3.8. This is quite important as well, the weapon speed is quite important for a lot of melee classes, so if anyone would choose to go for this, then um, yeah, they, they would probably want to have a 3.8 speed, but the big change here for me is the attack power in cat and bear form, suddenly making this mace usable by feral druids, which is incredible. Next up we have a Ashbringer placeholder quest item being data mined in the phase 4 PTR. Now, don't read too much into this, but we are going to talk about it anyway. Placeholder Ashbringer quest item. Now the quest text is the quest text or like the the, um, the flavor text here is totally real, not fake. Quest starter item for the Ashbringer quest, super duper real, totally not a joke. So hey, it could just be fake, could just be something thrown in there. They're really hinting towards it just being something funny. But either way, Ashbringer has existed in our database for quite some time and is associated with the as of yet unused questline Good and Evil. The placeholder quest item above seems to imply that Blizzard may be seriously looking into finally letting players start a questline to obtain this powerful sword. In 2023, Blizzard teased that an updated Scarlet Monastery could be coming to SOD, so it's highly likely that the Ashbringer questline would task players with resetting a newly re re renovated Scarlet Monastery. Now I think, even though the quest text here, like the flavor text, does imply this being fake, I think it should be real. We, we should be getting Ashbringer, something like that would be what brings a lot of people back in. Just go all out, just go full ham, ham and cheese without the cheese, just go full ham. Phase 4 needs to be incredible, Ashbringer would be a part of that. It's something that has been un unobtainable for so long. Make it obtainable in Phase 4. Make Phase 4 be absolutely insane. If it's not in Phase 4, at least be in Phase 5 when Blackwing Lair becomes available. Maybe maybe they're holding on on some of the legendaries until then. But um, yeah, Ashbringer would be incredible to get, man. If if Blizzard is preparing to let players finally get their hands on this legendary blade, it raises the question, will the sword be available to both the Alliance and the Horde factions? Our best guess is no, though this is pure speculations. While we're already in the realm of speculation, let's go a bit deeper. Say this placeholder item is Blizzard's first step at implementing the legendary Ashbringer, let's assume that it's only available to members of the Alliance. Will the Horde be able to obtain an equally acclaimed legendary weapon 
of a Warcraft lore, a weapon like Broxigar's Axe of Scenarius, perhaps. So there's been another item, data mined as well, where which we have a. It's not a lot about the item, but it's more about the model. So we have data mined the models of this weapon right here in Phase Four on the PTR. A pretty important weapon in the, in the, in the lore for Broxy, Broxy, Broxygar by Malfurion and Stormrage. So this weapon is quite important in the lore as well, which, I mean, adding two and two together, you usually get four, and to me, these two right here, like the coincidences between everything here, I think we'll get Ashbringer. If we don't get it in phase four, we're definitely getting it in phase five, but having it available, like having all of this in PTR and in the data mining right now, to me kind of suggests that we might get something about this in phase four. Maybe we end up getting a pre-item to Ashbringer in phase four that we then upgrade to Ashbringer in phase five. That could be the thing as well. Maybe giving you a little bit of a taste in phase four and then giving you the actual legendary in phase five. Next up, a real quick piece of news though, we have the um, accelerated heat phases, or I don't know what to call them, but basically activating heat level 2 and heat level 3, it's new difficulties in the raid. We don't know what this means, well I am assuming it means a harder dungeon or harder raid bosses in Molten Core, it's heat level 2 and heat level 3 in Molten Core, so it seems to be basically, you can look at it as normal, heroic and mythic Molten Core if you will, and um, we don't know if this will give better rewards as of yet. I'm hoping they talk more about this, but at the same time, allowing us to discover it for ourselves would be great. So just leave it like this. Tell us that heat level two and heat level three will be available, but don't say anything else. Just let us experience it for ourselves and find out, that would be great. But I do believe if we're activating heat level 2 and heat level 3, there should be increased rewards to compensate for it, because there has to be an incentive to actually activate the heat. We saw what happened in Season of Mastery, where they increased the difficulty of the raids, but didn't give you better rewards or more rewards either. I think they gave you like one or two more items, which is not enough at all. So it just felt bad, I'm hoping they learned a lesson here, and when they increase the difficulty of the raids there has to be some sort of reward for doing so as well. Now with all of this being said, let's take a look at some of the tier sets that have been data mined. These could be changed by the way, but it gives you an early idea of the, um, where they want to go with this season and uh, kind of their whole idea about tier sets in phase 4. So for balanced druids, I'm not going to go through every single item by the way, but I'm going to look at the tier set bonuses. So for 2 set bonus, damage dealt by thorns increased by 100% and duration increased by 200%. 4 set bonus increases your chance to hit with spells and attacks by 3%, and when you have all of them, or 6 sort of, um, six set bonus, reduces the cooldown of Starfall by 50%. For Feral DPS Druid, your Fairy Fire and Fairy Fire Feral also increase the chance for all attacks to hit that target by 1% for 40 seconds. 4 set bonus, periodic damage from your Rake and Rip can now be critical strikes, ooh, okay. 6 set bonus, your Rip and Ferocious Bite have a 20% chance per combo point spent to refresh the duration of Savage Roar back to its initial value. Okay, that's actually perfect, that's really good. So permanent uptime on Savage Roar. Then for tanks, let's go down to this one. So two set bonus, you may cast Rebirth and Innervate while in bear form or dire bear form. Okay, utility, perfect. Not good for tanking though, but utility, good. Uh, four set bonus reduces the cooldown of Enrage by 30 seconds, and it no longer reduces your armor. She okay. Bear form at the six set bonus. Bear form and dire bear form increases all threats you generate by an additional 20%. And the cower now removes all your threat against the target, but has a 20 second cooldown. For Restoration Druids on the other hand, 2 set bonus when you cast Innovate on another player, it also is cast on you. That's insane. 4 set bonus, casting your Healing Touch or Nourish spell also gives you a 25% chance to gain mana equal to 35% of the base cost of the spell. 
6 set bonus reduces the cooldown on tranquility by 100% and increases the healing by 100%. Okay, nice. For Hunter set, the Giant Stalker set, we have a ranged DPS Hunter. You generate 100% more threat for 8 seconds after using Distracting Shot. Okay. I mean, first of all, that's really good for the kiting mechanic they have in Molten Core. Not so good for DPS though, so I'm not sure about this one. While tracking a creature type, you deal 3% increased damage to that creature type. And a 6 set bonus, your next shot ability within 10 seconds after aim shot deals 20% more damage. Now, for melee hunter, this is where they have to have made everything from from like the from scratch. Two set bonus, your mongoose bite now also reduces its target's chance to dodge by 1% and increases your chance to hit by 1% for 30 seconds. Four set bonus, while tracking a creature type, you deal 3% increased damage to that creature type, so same one once again. And six set bonus, mongoose bite also activates for five seconds whenever you target your, your target parries or blocks or when your melee attack misses. Okay. So for mages, we have one for DPS and one for healer. I'm not sure how I feel about having one general one for mage DPS and not having a specific one for each um, spec, but okay, let's take a look. Two set bonus, you're immune to all damage while channeling evocation. For raiding purposes, I'm not sure about this one. For farming purposes, I'm really happy. <laughs> um, for set bonus, you gain 1% increased uh, damage for 15 seconds each time you cast a spell from a different school of magic. The question is, how far does this stack? Or does it not refresh? Or like, can I stack it up to 15, 20, 30 times? That, th th this one is weird, man. Um, okay. Six set bonus, mage armor increases your mana regeneration while casting by an additional 15%. Molten armor increases your spell damage and healing by 18. And ice armor grants 20% increased chance to trigger fingers of frost. For healer mage on the other hand, two set bonus, your temporal beacons last 20% longer, that's really good. Four set bonus increases all chronomantic healing you deal by 10%, and six set bonus, each time you heal a target with regeneration, the remaining cooldown on rewind time is reduced by one second. Nothing about mana. When it comes to druids, they had so much focus on mana. Mage healers, no focus on mana at all. Holy paladin. Two set bonus increases the chance for allies to trigger your judgment of light or judgment of wisdom to 100%, that's perfect. Four set bonus increases critical strike chance with spells and attacks by 2%, so 2% crit, really good, mana back as well. Six set bonus, whenever your flash of light, holy light or beacon of light heals the target to full, full health, you also heal all members of their party for, ooh, yeah, so you basically heal everyone else whenever you heal someone to full, that is insane. Retribution Paladin, two set bonus, your Judgment of Light and the Judgment of Wisdom now also grants the effect of Judgment of the Crusader. Four set bonus increases your critical strike chance by 2%, and six set your Seals of Command, Seals of Righteousness and Seal of Martyrdom now persist for six seconds after you cast another seal, or until you cast a third seal. Your judgments can now trigger multiple seals if active. Oi, 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 okay, okay, okay. Protection Paladin increases the EOL well, 2 set, increases the block value of your shield by 30. 4 set bonus, heal for 189 to 211 when you block, can only heal once every few seconds, so 3.5 second cooldown. 6 set bonus, holy shield no longer has charges, and instead always lasts its full duration. In addition, its damage is increased by 200% of your shield block value. Going over to Priest, we have Healer Priest, 2 set bonus, 
minus 0.1 second to the casting time of flash heal and minus 0.1 second to the casting time of greater heal. 0.1 second casting time, are we sure about this one? Anyone who plays a healer, let me know if you're excited about this. Um, 4 set bonus increases your critical strike chance by 2%, and 6 set increases your critical strike chance with prayer of healing and circle of healing by 25%. DPS priest on the other hand, 2 set, you may cast flash heal while in shadow form, that's really, really underwhelming when it comes to being a raid set. Who wants to use flash heal? Give me literally anything else. 1% DPS increase, I don't know. 4 set bonus zone, 2% crit, really good. And 6 set bonus, mind blast critical strikes reduces the duration of your next mind fly by 50% while increasing its total damage by 100%. Okay, nice, that's pretty bad, that's pretty good. Pretty bad, really, pretty good, pretty good. Rogue tier set Night Slayer, so let's talk about DPS first. 2 set bonus, Faint now also grants avoidance for 6 seconds, reducing all the damage taken from area of effect damage from non-players by 50%. 4 set bonus, increases the critical strike damage of your poisons by 100%, so that is just for all DPS, huh? 100% poison damage. Will, won't that be way better for assassination than anyone else? And then a 6 set bonus, your finishing moves has a 5% chance per combo point to make your next ability cost no energy. Then we have Tank Rogue, 2 set bonus, while just a flesh wound and blade dance are active, Fan of Knives costs 50% less energy and generates a 100% increased threat. 4 set bonus, Vanish now reduces all magic damage you take by 50% for its duration, but it no longer grants stealth or breaks movement impairing effects. 6 set bonus, your finishing moves have 20% chance per combo point to make you take 50% less physical damage from the next melee attack that hits you within 10 seconds. Okay, that's actually not bad, not bad. But only from one attack though, from the next attack, right? Not bad. Okay, next up we have Shaman. For Shaman, there's four different ones. So, Healer Shaman. Two set bonus. The radius of your totems that affect your friendly targets is increased to 40 yards. Four set bonus. After casting your Healing Wave, Lesser Healing Wave, or Riptide spell, gives you a 25% chance to gain mana equal to 35% of the base cost of the spell. Six set bonus. Your Healing Wave will now jump to additional nearby targets. Each jump reduces the effectiveness of the heal by 80% and the spell will jump to up to two additional targets. Pretty good, not bad, for healing wave. So healing wave is like, kind of a chain heal, not bad. Melee DPS shaman though, two set bonus, the radius, so same one, the, the totem increased by 40 yards. Well, 240 yards. 4 set bonus, 2% crit, and 6 set bonus, your flurry talent grants an additional 10% increase to your attack speed. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Okay, melee DPS shamans looking really good still, and um, for ranged DPS shaman the 2 set bonus is still the exact same. 4 set bonus, your lightning bolt critical strikes have a 35% chance to reset the cooldown on lava burst and chain lightning, and make the next lava burst, chain heal or chain lightning within 10 seconds instant. Oh. And 6 set bonus, Lava Burst now also refreshes the duration of Flame Shock on your target back to 12 seconds. For tanks, 2 set bonus. It's actually different. Increases your attack speed by 30% for your next 3 swings after you parry, dodge or block. 30% attack speed when you... Ooh. Okay. 2 set bonus, your, mass, your parries and dodges also activate your shield mastery rune ability. And 6 set, your stone skin totem also reduces physical damage taken by 5%, and your wind wall totem also reduces the magical damage taken by 5%. For warlocks, there's only one set. So, um, for 2 set here, life tap generates 50% more mana and 100% less threat. 
two set bonus increases your well four set increases your critical strike by two percent and six set bonus your knight fall talent has a four percent chance to uh, increase chance to trigger your immolate periodic damage has a four percent chance to grant fire trance reducing the cast time of your next incinerate or immolate by a hundred percent and lastly, the class that everyone is waiting for, let's talk about Warriors. Tank Warriors first, 2 set bonus increases the block value of your shield by 30, 4 set bonus you gain 1 extra rage every time you take any damage or deal auto attack damage. 6 set bonus increases all threat you generate in defensive stance by an additional 10% and increases all damage you deal in gladiator stance by 4%. Going over to DPS Warriors though, 2 set bonus you gain 10 rage when you change stances, 4 set bonus for 5 seconds after leaving a stance, you can use abilities requiring that stance as if you were still in that stance, 6 set bonus for the, next, uh, for the first 10 seconds after activating a stance, you gain an additional benefit, in battle stance or gladiator stance you gain 10% increased damage done, berserker stance 10% increased critical strike chance, and in defensive stance, 10% reduced physical damage taken. Holy! Berserker stance, 10% increased critical strike. And with all of the other set bonuses, it looks like they really want you to stance dance. They're bringing back stance dance, or further enhancing stance dancing. Okay, this could be really fun. Could be really good warrior gameplay. And um, warrior top DPS. I'm, I've been saying it since phase 1, man. Warrior top DPS in Classic WoW. Who would have guessed it, dude? They're going to hit, when you have Recklessness as well, you will hit 100% Critical Strike with World of Buffs. Because you have 50% from Wreck, with the, the Wreck Rune and Wreck stuff now. So 50 World, world Buffs and 10% from this. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, warriors are going to be doing double the DPS of anyone else. Nice. Who would have guessed it, man? Why do I play a mage? <laughs> okay, well, there we go. Th those are all the tier sets, right? So hopefully... I just wanted to cover them quickly to give you an idea of... Um, well, if you haven't seen them yourself, well, at least now you know. And um, yeah, hopefully you paid attention when I was covering your class. But those are the news so far. This and the two videos I released recently pretty much covers everything. Now, I do want to say that yesterday I made a video about my concerns where I mentioned PvP events. For example, only the only event they have talked about is Stranglethorn Vale getting increased rewards. That being said, something that they haven't talked about, which people have found through testing, is a brand new Black Rock Eruption event, which I don't know why they haven't talked about, but it seems to be a Black Rock Eruption event every three hours, which, which looks to be a brand new PvP event, maybe PvP or PvE, I don't really know. But there might be more than just a PvP event of Strangleton Vale, which would make me more happy because using Strangleton Vale three phases in a row, it was fun in phase two, shit in phase three, would be very bad in phase four, so Strangleton Vale has to go and something else has to come in, which it looks like we might have something else. They might not have revealed all their cards yet. Either way, I just wanted to put that out there real quick, but that's the video for today, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on phase four in the comments down below as well and uh, thank you for watching i really do appreciate it once again if you enjoyed the video leave a like it really helps out and thank you for watching i'll see you again in the next video very soon